I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to share a rules overview and review of Cross Clues. It's ages 7 and up, 2 to 6 players, and it takes 10 minutes. Let me show you how to play. The goal of the game is to get all of the coordinate cards into their correct places on the board while being given one word clues by your fellow players. For game setup, we have a classic game here, which is a four by four grid. You can do an express game with just a three by three grid, and then you need to take out any of the coordinate cards that have a D or four on them. Or if you uh, want to go for it, you can do an expert level game and have it be a five by five grid, and then you add in the uh, corresponding coordinate cards. You also have words that you place underneath uh, by each of the letters and numbers. Uh, you make it so there's only one word showing. These are two-sided cards, so it's really easy for future rounds of play. You can just uh, flip over the cards or turn them so that a different word is visible for future rounds. We'll say this is a two-player game and that they are choosing to use the timer. The timer is optional, uh, but it is five minutes. And we've found when we've played, it's served to move the game along without uh, making it be horribly rushed. So we do like using the timer. So you would flip it over. And if it's a two player game, two or three players, you each get two of these cards that you wouldn't show to anybody. And you would get to look at them. The timer's going and there's no turn order. You just get to look at your card. This person has both B2 and B3, and this person has D2 and A1. So they're trying to come up with clues that combine these two spots. So this person has both pig and fast. So they might say uh, greased, like a greased pig. And they hope that from that, the other players are allowed to openly discuss things. They can't say anything. And uh, if it's just the other player, they're on their own. Um, but with more players, they talk about it. And then they come to a decision and they say, okay, we think it is B2. And if they're correct, then this player gets to place that card in the correct spot. If they were not correct and they came up with something else, then you have to discard the card off to the side face down so that no one sees the coordinate. But they got it, so they can put it right here and draw a replacement card, which nobody else would see, but they would get to see. And then uh, again, it can be any order. Um, this person, if they feel like they have a clue, they can say, okay, uh, runner. And then they talk about it and they say, okay, fast leg. Is it D2? You need to give the coordinate. They place it down if it's correct. Uh, and you just keep on doing, you draw a replacement card. Sometimes it gets a little bit easier if you have a tough combination and a few more of them fill in and you weren't sure what to say for pig sugar, well, at this point, anything related to a pig, if you have a B4 card and you just say oink, then hopefully that's enough to go on and you can uh, fill it in. And there's a chart at the end of the game and you just see how many you go until either the timer runs out or uh, there are no clue cards left in the pile and the players have no more cards in hand. And at that point, uh, you tally up how many you got correct and see how you did. So that's how to play cross clues. The target demographic is it's a family level game specifically for people who love word games. If you love word games, you're going to love this game. The rule complexity is very easy. It is so nice to, uh, especially if someone already knows how to play, they just set it up and say whatever your uh, grid card you get, those two words say one word for the clue. That's it. So I love it. It's very easy to get up and running, which is a, a huge plus. How competitive, although it is cooperative, it is challenging. Sometimes the two words that you're trying to combine are just wildly separate and one word to bring it together is very difficult. Uh, and it can be escalating because if you play on the expert level and there's a five by five grid, there's so many different word combinations and, and spots on the grid to kind of watch out for that it can be very difficult. But I like that it can be it can be managed. If you're playing this with uh, younger kids, you can start with a smaller grid, uh, the three by three, and have much more success. So I like that 
you can have without changing things too much manage the difficulty level of the game quite a bit and have it be fun um and and fit the whoever you are playing with be the the right level of difficult for your audience um how replayable we i love word games i play a lot of word games and uh this is one of my go-to's now uh so if you love word games this is this is a, a very good one to have in your collection uh and even for people who don't that word games aren't usually their thing it's easy to get them to play this because it is cooperative it feels very positive as you play it uh isn't uh, punitive if, if you if you aren't getting it as as well other people in the group can kind of pick up the slack uh so it's just a fun uh, kind of social game for a social word game for everybody to play together. Um, on that note, similar games. Uh, I would put this right in between Just One and So Clover, a couple of our other favorite word games. Uh, they are both cooperative. In Just One, uh, the one person has a card and everybody is giving one word to try to give them a hint for what they're supposed to guess on the card. And the trick is you're not, you're trying to not say the same thing on your card because um, duplicate clues cannot be used. And then in So Clover, you basically have to do the thing from this game, but on in a bunch of spots on a little board where you're trying to combine two often completely unrelated words and have people put things back in the right order at the end. So this, I would say, is more of a family level uh, word game. They're, they're all really fun in their own way, but this is great for um, just a, a game night with friends and it also would work well with a family, which means it's really versatile and so fun. So you should check it out. Thanks and see you next time from Game Like a Mother.